Hi, it's Kat. This is Ray Bloom Room. And on the podcast, I recorded an episode where I did something a little different. I read the first chapter of a book by an earlier African American explorer, Matthew A. Henson. He was on the expedition with Robert Peary, um, and he was reported to be the first person to reach the North Pole. And I think his story is really interesting. I kind of fall in love with him a little bit when I read the story. Um, he's just so, you know, he's somebody who lost his parents early on, had to leave school and work. And he ended up working for Robert Peary, who was an explorer. And he, Robert Peary, he, Peary hired him. And they ended up going on multiple expeditions in the Arctic and I also have a couple of cautions. There's one for me that was the relationship between Peary and Henson. Peary seemed to sort of, more than sort of, look down on Henson, which really, I find really grating from this distance of like, you know, a couple uh, century. Um, I just feel like, oh God, you're working for somebody. That would have been like a toxic workplace today. <laughs> But anyway, I guess all most workplaces were toxic workplaces for black people in the early 1900s. Let's just be real. So that kind of was a little bit harsh. And the other caution, which is probably, I don't say it's bigger, but it, it also stood out to me, which was the relationship between Henson and Peary um, and the, the Inuit people that they met in in that part of the world. Um, both Peary and Henson um, had children with Inuit women. Uh, I haven't read deeply into the book yet, so I'll find out if we hear more of their, about their stories. I would love to hear the, the stories from those women's point of view, but I don't think we have that. Um, but I, you know, I'm interested to see how they felt about each other. I don't know. Um, but it is a little, it, it is a caution for me. There's also an incident in the first chapter where um, Henson describes sort of adopting a um, younger Inuit child, boy child, and sort of cleaning his greasy clothes and chopping off his hair, which, you know, the erasure of Native American culture, or na not even American, the, the erasure of Native culture, of, of indigenous cultures, of other cultures, any kind of other culture. Um, we know that long, painful, violent, horrible history, and it makes me sad that, um, that Henson was a part of that erasure. Um, that may, that really kind of stands out to me. I don't want to, you know, it doesn't take away from Henson. I think it doesn't take away a hundred percent from Henson's, um, for my love for Henson. I, I love him, but I also feel like, Oh, I wish he hadn't. I just wish he hadn't done that. <sighs> I really wish he hadn't done that. Um, there are descendants of Henson, um, in Greenland, um, who recognize him and 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 appreciate him? So I think somewhere, somewhere there's there is um, there's a family feeling there, um, but it's also it just it's unfortunate. So why is this relevant? Um, it's because when we travel places, we bring our internalized beliefs with us. And some of those internalized beliefs are not so nice. When we travel to places, do we let people be who they are? Do we let places be what they are? Or do we try to remake people into what we want them to be or expect them to be? Do we try to reshape the places that we go to into something that makes us more comfortable because it's more familiar? Are we constantly looking at new situations and trying to stamp an old template onto them? Um, once I traveled with a then boyfriend who looked at everything constantly and was like, oh, I have one of those in DC. Oh, wow. I, that reminds me of something that I saw in DC. 
we would never do anything like that in DC. Can you imagine if I did that in DC? We broke up during that trip. You, you got what I need. But we're better off as friends. Boo! We're better off as friends. When you can let go of that, that's not how we do it back home. That's when you can really, truly be where you are. Because the world is not going to fit into your mold. The world is doing its own thing. So maybe observe, let it be, ask questions, clarify how things are, but maybe try not to stamp that back home template and fit things into the mold of something that you expect it to be. Don't go around chopping off the, the world's hair. If nobody's getting hurt, why don't you just let people be who they are and try to let go of your template for how people should eat, how they should dress, what music they should listen to, how what time they should go to bed, what everything. Just Why don't you just let people do what they're going to do and just observe it as it is, not as it isn't in your home place. Because isn't that why you travel? I mean, I don't know. That's why I travel, to see how the world is, where it is, how it is. And please, please, please try not to cut other people off from their own culture just to make yourself feel more comfortable. Not everybody has cereal for breakfast every day. What? No, no. Not everybody has fruit for breakfast every day. Not everybody has waffles for breakfast every day. Some people have fish for breakfast with a little bit of rice. Some people have soup for breakfast with a little bit of toast. That shouldn't rock your world. It's just how it is. That's what they do. So when in Rome, if nobody's getting hurt, why not? Let them be. Let it be. Let it be different from what you know. Let it be different and let it be okay. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, you don't like it when other people do it to you. What you doing eating some cereal for breakfast? That cray cray. What are you doing eating fruit for breakfast? That's disgusting. You got twists in your hair? Oh, I'm cutting that off. Twists. Okay. Nobody's getting hurt. Let it be. And listen to the podcast. Love you. Bye. <laughs> also, subscribe and hit the notifications bell so that you'll know when the next episode drops. Love you all. Bye.